Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I am starting a little bit of a basement fireplace renovation. This whole fireplace has been just kind of a back of the mind project that I wanted to kind of add to to help enhance the room a little bit and actually show that it is usable living space. So one of the interesting things about this fireplace is it was not built with limestone like a lot of the fireplaces of this era were built. It has like a two by 12 or 12 and a half. It's almost like a patio block with a cut edge and it's a little different. And because the way they did this, I don't know that I'll even be able to put a fireplace door on it, but at the very least, I'll be able to get a fireplace screen. I had old brass colored fireplace accessories. We're gonna go with black and make it a little more modern. As you can see, I've got them behind me here, a log holder and some tools. Now this has just been a concrete hearth all this time. This house was built in, I think, 1956. I know the neighbor's house was built in 1956, so we're right about the same time. He has a beautiful limestone hearth with slate tile and it's a corner fireplace. So, so it has a view and heat source to two separate rooms. It makes a very beautiful Christmas scene at the house next door. And the family hasn't lived there in a very long time. It's been an old man who raised his family there and a single man now. And what I wouldn't do to have a fireplace like that to show off. Unfortunately, the only fireplace in this house is in the basement. It doesn't go through to the upstairs. Where this leads up, it's in a hallway because of the way they laid out the whole house. A lot of the houses of this area had a double fireplace because they would go through to the basement and the main floor. So I'm going to do what I can to liven this thing up. One of the things I already did is this had brown enamel grace on it and I used a Rust-Oleum Stone Accents spray paint on them to help them blend in with the stone a little bit. And I scrubbed the whole front to get all the soot off that I can. We're going to go with a stenciled hearth and I'm painting the firebox. Now to have any benefit of painting the firebox, you want to make sure that you use high temperature or high heat paint. I'm familiar with this from doing touch up coats over my maple syrup evaporator. So you want to make sure that you get as high heat tolerant paint as you can pick up. I tell you all the time, Rust-Oleum ought to be paying me for all of my service announcements to them, but it's what we have readily available to us. I'm using the brush on Rust-Oleum high heat. This is very thin paint. It's a lot different than just regular oil based paint. And I have used it in the spray can and in the quartz, but you know, we've got a metal firebox here and it just reads as kind of a rusty color. You can see here with the light. So I'm putting a good coat of black paint, maybe two in inside. I've got a beautiful old fashioned, very fancy uh, fire grate for the logs to sit into. Well, I guess it's actually called a log grate or a log holder, but it's going to be beautiful. We're going to do some beautiful stenciling out here on the outside. I'm going to add a wood mantle for the top and maybe some accent trim pieces to the sides. Kerosene and mineral spirits are really good for cleaning your brushes and for cleaning any paint off your hands. Now, you know, you get it deep into your fingernail creases and that. You might want to wear gloves when you do this. It was really messy. And because the fire grate or the log grate was so intricate with all of it and it's cast iron, it's really neat. It's got wheels on the front so that you can roll it out for cleaning the firebox out or for loading it and then shoving it back in. It's really great. I think this was original to the house when it was built. I don't remember buying it and putting it there at all. Um, it's, there's a possibility that the tenants did. I just really don't remember. Um, so I used the spray paint on this because it was a lot easier to go over that and because it is so intricate it did take the full can because we're having nothing but windy days lately okay so my black paint is all dry and i'm back here at day two i had some gray paint on hand and it is an epoxy countertop paint and i thought this would be really perfect for this project because it will probably hold up really well to logs uh, sitting on it being scratched across it fireplace tools you know, decorating, all kinds of things like that. And I'm still being able to stick with the original gray that was here, but just lighting it up a shade or two. Now I've got another gray on hand. I've got white on hand. I've got cream on hand. That is also this epoxy paint. I stopped by Michael's craft store today and I picked up some Martha Stewart stencils and stencil brushes. 
due to the fact that I wanted to work on this today so that it's got time to dry. Um, I really, really wanted to do something more of like a Moroccan style stencil. I had mentioned um, Jamie Ray Vintage. She had just done her fireplace um, threshold last week and I thought it was absolutely beautiful, but time constraints kind of make this that I have to get this project done this weekend. And by using this epoxy paint, it just meant that I could get it hard, get it done fast, and hide some of the imperfections. Now, normally I would probably do this with a roller. When you do any kind of kitchen countertops or anything like that, you want to use a roller so that you don't have brush strokes and it's nice and smooth. However, my mini roller is tied up in a cabinet trim project, so I didn't want to unload it just to be able to get my base coat going on this. Now, a lot of times how I handle my projects here at the workhouse is, like I'll get this painted and get it drying, and then I'll go back to yesterday's project that I had to leave off because I had run out of trim for the cabinets. So that's why I needed that roller brush ready. Now I have to go back to the garage and get the supplies painted out that I picked up today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep brushing this all out. I did tape off my grates that I already painted, but But I'm not taping off the mortar here because it really doesn't matter. Well, that made a little bit of improvement. I did not pick up my mantle piece because I believe I already had one at home. So today I'm going ahead with my cards and I've kind of been making some decisions about what I want to do with my patterns here. And let me show you uh, the different designs here. They're kind of a... I'd say they're kind of an Indian inspired. I was looking for something a little more Moroccan, but they didn't really have what I wanted. Um, a lot of them were too floral, so I think I'm gonna use this scrolly design on the ends for a little bit of interest. And I could possibly even put the flower at the corner but the big square here is just about the right size to go across the whole hearth um, with maybe just the dot border on the edge. I'm not real sure I could come further out or just center it, but then that leaves so much plainness right there. So I'm just gonna kind of start playing around with this. Um, it's really good to have your paint ready and it doesn't take much, oh. So it really doesn't take a lot of paint. You wanna get paint on your brush and then what's called offload it. You want it um, to have paint on it, but have it pretty dry so that you don't get bleeding. Uh, through your pattern and
cardboard works really good for offloading because it'll absorb some of that excess. Some people like to dab and some people like to swirl. It just kind of depends on your own personal taste. Get these little dots. I'm just hoping I'm moving all over the place. to wipe my stencil in between and rag number two is missing. This will make sure you're making a good clean and crisp um, print as you go or stencil. This design is literally just perforations. And I'm sure you could do this really easily with different sizes, create your own. And try not to do what I just did. But, oh, that is so sensible. I like that. Because this is a high heat area, I am using the epoxy paint and again, it was something I had on hand, but I'm using the appliance epoxy right now, which I'll show you the can in a little bit. But I think this is gonna go super.
Well, you know what they say about hindsight being 2020, perfect vision when you can go back and look at it? Editing videos gives you that hindsight in advance. I kind of like that. So in editing my video, I saw something that you may have already caught that I didn't catch until it was already done and there's nothing I can do about it. Let me turn the camera around and show you up close. So I'm sure I could probably fix it by taking acetone to the epoxy or just sanding it off and starting over, but it's not worth the effort. It is going to take a good eye to catch it. So let me know in the comments below if you caught it. So besides having a little bit heavier stenciling here and there here where there was more paint on the brush, what you can do is go back and distress it. So just lightly sand over it. Now I tried this with just a drywall sanding sponge, which was not aggressive enough. So I have my multi-tool with like 120 grit sandpaper on it, I think. Um, I knew an 80 would be too rough. So I'm just gonna hit it in some of these areas where it's a little bit heavier. And because I'm sanding it, I'm gonna go ahead and seal it with the uh, triple thick polyurethane. And this is just some varathane that I had on hand. Generally, I always buy Minwax products for stain and for varnishes. I used Varathane once on a wood floor and it just peeled right off. I don't know if it was just that there wasn't enough sanding in between layers, but that floor was a total fail and later on the whole thing got covered with carpet. So, you know, another one of those hindsights, I didn't know about this Varathane product. So this is only the second time I've ever used it, but I liked that it was matte and I couldn't find a matte finish in the Minwax at the store I was at. Because the black paint is a flat black, I didn't want this to be too shiny by going over it with any kind of a gloss. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with my multi-tool. I just picked this up the other day. I bought the Performax brand from Menards. I think it was $39, maybe $49, but holy cow, it came with six or seven different heads on it and I've already used it to sand my countertop upstairs and I used it to put in uh, new hinges in my doors and to line up my new door jams. So it's already been very useful and I'm gonna use it again on putting in my tile floor. So I picked up a case of tile because I thought I would extend the hearth out this way. Now I was thinking that this was a project I was gonna work on today, but guess what? The case has all kinds of broken tiles and I can probably get the project done with what isn't broke, if not too many of them are broke. It looks like the top three are broke. I'll have to sort through it, but this is a Mona Serra. It says it's from the Euro collection. It's a light gray and it's a ceramic tile. Um, so I thought it would go nice here. It actually blends really well between the gray carpet and if somebody added um, a vinyl plank flooring. So if you saw in the last clip, I had spilled a little bit of paint. It actually cleaned up really well because I caught it so fast. Um, I can kind of see it and feel it right here but the tenants had um, some hot ash come out and there's a couple of spots here and there's a little one here. And of course the kids have been here too. So I could come out a row or two with the tile and just kind of expand on the hearth to make it look more substantial. And we've been working on the mantle. Well, this is upside down of how I had originally wanted to put it. I wanted to keep it not too bulky. Um, the block up at the top was interfering as far as the width across by having it the right way, but I can easily just put another board on the top and just put in some filler pieces right here to have it be a thicker block without having this hollow because this isn't really enough for that to sit on there. I could trim the edge here with a little bit of scrap that I have. And I believe this was just about six feet. And I knew I could go up to about six and a half to go to the edge of 
the hearth. So I'm gonna take some measurements with that. Now I'm getting a lot of white trim through here. Um, I'm gonna think about whether I want to do a white mantle on the top board. I was originally thinking of painting it white because I have plenty of that on hand. So this was originally going to be the top of it. And I started looking at how pretty that was and I wondered about uh, staining it with the gel stain, a darker color to have a little bit of dark color here. Now I know a lot of people are doing wood accents um, and whole walls around the fireplace and above the fireplace. I think that this room would look really great having this wall here, one of those wood plank walls. But then you get into vinyl plank flooring if they want to add that. I've got cabinets here that could have cabinet doors on them. If I really just kept going on this project, I'd box in this drain pipe. We've got a lot of space that we're talking about here and I have to stop doing remodels at some point or another or else I'm never going to get this finished and get it sold. I'm working on the bathroom upstairs. I'm working on the kitchen upstairs. We're going to be starting in on the roof. And as you know, we have other houses that I need to move on to and lots of work to do at the farm. So as much as I'd like to keep going, I'm going to have to call it and have this be about as far as I go with the mantle. I'll have to get into that box, like I said, and see how many tiles I've got. But I'd really like to cut that back. We were a little short um, when he did the laying out for the carpet because he cut it. Um, I don't think he cut it as he rolled it out. He cut it with the measurement of the room and um, then rolled it out. So he was a little short here. Now I could just put some of this trim and cut it down a little bit here around the edges and it'll hide a lot of that. But right here, it wasn't gonna quite hide it. Um, quarter round, you know, something like that along with the trim would cover it. So tell me in the comments below what you would do because I'm not going to proceed until you guys tell me what to do with the top and if I should go ahead with the tile out this way or not. Some days when I come to work on the house or to do other things, it seems like not a lot gets done because it's something that you don't see a visual change and that's okay. It's just got to be that way. Um, on the suggestion of a viewer, something that I learned to do is sometimes I just kind of pour it out and spread it. But I'll tell you that backfired on me the other day. I was working on the kitchen countertop and I poured it out. I thought I got it spread out pretty well. It was too thick and it started to crackle and have like an old fashioned finish on it. I had to sand that whole layer off and it took days to dry. So I sand a little bit and then sand a little more. So use caution when you decide to do this because it may ruin your project. Classic. 
coal and traditional and not into the whole farmhouse finishes because I live on a farm. I have chippy painted barns all over the place and I don't like to look at it in my house too. It's just my own personal taste. I like it, I just don't like it in my house. So let me know what you think I should do with the front, with the tile, and with the mantle. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like button. Bye-bye.